Fox News host Harris Faulkner was visibly panicked when she was forced to fact check Donald Trump's 2020 election lies on air, proof that the nearly $800 million Fox was forced to pay as a consequence of signal boosting Trump's lies still stings them. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we got a couple of clips to play in this video, but I want to start with this one. This was a lot of fun to watch. So much schadenfreude watching Fox actually cope with the consequences of their own stupidity and dishonesty and the stupidity and dishonesty of Donald Trump. For context, Donald Trump gave public remarks. He once again spread the lie that he won the 2020 election and that it was stolen from him. And a visibly panicked Harris Faulkner was forced to fact check it to Fox viewers on air. At the very beginning, you heard the former president talk about a stolen election. And while he may feel a certain way, the facts remain Joe Biden was declared the winner with 51 percent of the vote. States certified those results of the 2020 election and Congress accepted those results. Now the nation is moving toward November 5th. So you can tell Faulkner, who is a big fan of Donald Trump, she is unabashedly pro-Trump, was not happy about having to read that disclaimer, which was no doubt given to her by Fox News lawyer saying we are not going to go through this again. Anytime Donald Trump signal boost lies about the 2020 election, we have to have had a disclaimer. Uh, I love to see it. Love to see it. And so do a lot of people on Twitter. Andrew Egger, $787 million is a lot of money. Those Fox lawyers are on call. Suing for defamation has results. That Dominion settlement still looms large. And then we get to David French or so many others. David French, conservative writer. In a piece last week, I argued that the defamation judgment slash settlements from the 2020 cycle could deter a repeat of right wing media lies in 2024. This is an example. Does Fox do this if it hadn't paid more than seven hundred eighty seven million dollars for its conduct in 2020? It's a good point. So let's actually go to um, what David French had to say. So. He, of course, this is part of an op-ed where he says it's unlikely, and I do agree it's unlikely, but still very plausible, that Trump will be able to successfully steal the 2024 election the way he tried to in 2020. Again, unlikely, but very plausible, and we should take it seriously, and even David French concedes that as well, that we should take nothing for granted, we should not get complacent, and Donald Trump will absolutely try to steal the election. It's just a consequence of how likely that is. So one of the points he makes is, let's start with the first element of his plan, leveraging right-wing media to tell his lies. A cascade of defamation litigation has imposed extraordinary costs on dishonest right-wing media outlets. Fox, most notably, agreed to pay more than $787 million to settle defamation claims brought by Dominion Voting Systems. That was a huge one. You know, Donald Trump and his surrogates were saying, Dominion Voting Systems, they switched the votes from Trump to Biden. And Fox uncritically, very often, signal boosted these claims that they knew to be lies. They knew it. They knew it. They, in private correspondence and text messages and emails and Slack threads, they admitted that the people that they were bringing on to spread these claims were crazy, were kooky, were lying, were crazy. Like they, they knew all of that. And yet they knowingly signal boosted Donald Trump's lies because they didn't want to lose right wing and MAGA voter viewer share, not voter share, viewer share to OAN and Newsmax. Okay. That is part of the reason that they agreed to settle this, you know, uh, lawsuit and pay nearly a billion dollars. Despite robust First Amendment protections, they knew they would probably lose in trial. That's how bad it was. Uh, He goes on to say, Gateway Pundit, a popular right-wing website filed for bankruptcy to try to protect itself from defamation claims brought by two Georgia election workers, Ruby Freeman and Wandrea Moss. It was later settled. It later settled those claims, excuse me, out of court. The list goes on. Rudy Giuliani faces a staggering jury verdict for defaming Freeman and Moss, and on Tuesday, a federal judge ordered him to transfer his New York apartment, a vintage Mercedes, and dozens of other personal items to Freeman and Moss. Other right-wing news organizations, including Salem Media Group, Newsmax, and One American News Network, have made apologies, issued retractions, and entered into settlements in response to their own defamatory statements in 2020. Again, you love to see the consequences for these authoritarian losers spreading knowing lies about the fact that President Biden rightly and legitimately and fairly kicked Donald Trump's loser ass in the 2020 election. Deal with it. Also, while I have you here and on the subject of, you know, right wing media and the standards and uh, of truth telling and things like that, Constantine Kissin is a, a centrist. 
podcast host. He's one of the co-hosts of Trigonometry. And of course, that means he's actually a right winger. He is pro-Trump. He grades Republicans and Trump on a curve. He's very critical about the left. Donald Trump trying to steal election matters less to him than the fact that the green M&M in the M&M commercials is wearing flats instead of heels. And that's an assault on gender and that sort of nonsense. That's that's who Constantine Kissin is. Again, a loser who is would absolutely be unable to adequately defend Trump in a conversation and debate. So he has to duck these. So in response to, you know, Donald Trump repeatedly saying things like the media are the enemy of the people, this is what he says. I would never say the media are the enemy of the people. We actually need a mainstream media that does its job. But any media outlet which called Trump's rally a Nazi rally or called him Hitler is the enemy of truth and democracy and therefore an enemy of the people, right? This is in reference to the recent Madison Square Garden thing. And it, this ties to Fox. Just give it just a second. So in response, liberal streamer Destiny says, me desperately searching for the same energy when Trump calls everyone a Marxist communist fascist. Now, Constantine's cope to this is he can't defend Trump's rhetoric. He knows Trump is objectively worse when it comes to incendiary rhetoric than any and all in collective, any Democrat. He says he moves the goalposts. Well, the media and a political candidate are not the same thing. The media is supposed to be objective and factually accurate. No one expects political candidates to be. So it's okay if presidents or former presidents lie. But of course, Constantine actually doesn't believe that because if a liberal president, if a democratic president, if a progressive president lies, Constantine would be ripping his hair out. No, how dare you? You have to tell the truth unless you're a Republican and conservative. And then uh, the standards change. Again, an unprincipled loser. This is where the topic starts to shift. Destiny responds, no one expects a political candidate to be factually accurate. This is what I mean when I say Trump and his supporters are shameless, and indeed they are. It's their superpower. Constantine responds and says, Destiny thinks the political candidate he supports is factually accurate. That would be the political candidate who calls her opponent Hitler and the ones before that who said he was an illegitimate president and said that the Nazis were fine and said that he said that the Nazis were fine people. Vice President Harris has not referred to Donald Trump as Hitler, so Constantine, as is the case for a MAGA supporter, is just objectively wrong on the facts. Um, Hillary Clinton called Donald Trump an illegitimate president a few times. It's true, but she also formally and publicly conceded the 2016 election, didn't try to sue her way into the White House, didn't try to engage in a false elector scheme, and didn't foment an insurrection. She's morally superior by far to Donald Trump. And again, Constantine Kissin could never, ever argue otherwise. He would always lose that debate because that's what happens when you try to defend Trump. Destiny responds with this. Find me a single story on the liberal side. It's comparable to the Fox v. Dominion lawsuit where Trump's personal lawyers started to lie about voter fraud, went on Fox to spread it, and Fox spread the lie knowing it was a lie the entire time. I'll wait. This is how Constantine Kissin respond. responded. Oh, I know this one. Claiming a president who was lawful, lawfully elected was in fact elected by a hostile foreign government with which he had colluded. You're probably already recognizing the problem with that, but Destiny addresses it. Number one, which sp specific media example were you referring to? Number two, what is your evidence that they were intentionally telling lies? Number three, what is your evidence that they were directly bullied into doing this by a political campaign? There is no counterpart to the Fox Dominion thing. CNN, MSNBC, they've never been successfully sued and forced to settle for half a million, three quarters of a million, excuse me, half a billion, three quarters of a billion or a billion dollars because they were knowingly signal boosting the lies of a political candidate. Now, some MSNBC anchors may have overstated the strength of the connection between Trump and Russia, and you can criticize them for that, but that is infinitely less dangerous and infinitely less objectionable than what Fox knowingly did, as was revealed during the discovery in the Dominion voting systems. Constantine Kissin, again, is forced to create a false equivalence because he can't hold Trump and Republicans and right-wing media to the same standard, because if he does, he will always lose the debate because they are inferior. They are just worse. They are objectively worse. He can't deal with that. And so he's forced to create this sort of BS double standard. But getting all the way back to Harris Faulkner, it was funny to see in real time her freaking out, you know, and forced to, you know, provide this much needed fact check given the moral transgressions of her uh, network and the network to which she belongs. Um, really disgusting stuff, and I'm glad that they are forced to do this and issue these statements, these clarifications on air, because uh, you know it absolutely infuriates their voter base but and their viewers. So in the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.